Well, I will go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Corey Hewlin, and this is Mattermost's approach to layered extensibility and open source. Um, got a bunch of slides here. I'll try to go through them kind of quick, and maybe we'll finish early, and there's Q&A or something like that. If people want to talk, stand around and talk about Mattermost more, than happy to. And if you, there's something you're interested in, don't be afraid to stop me, and we can drill down a little bit more. Um, so Mattermost, you know, Mattermost is an operating system. Mattermost is an OS. Like, we envisioned Mattermost from the very beginning as a platform. I always like to say the original binary was named platform, the original repository was named platform. It's one of those things where I always like to say, like, if you think of your collaboration tool like Mattermost as a platform, what other open source application would you build on top of that platform, right? Would it be conversational AI? Would it be business intelligence? Would it be very verticalized data, Salesforce data, HR data, finance data? Um, and so it's really interesting to think about that as a problem. Like, when you think about your collaboration tool and building on top of that collaboration tool, like what types of applications or what types of extensions or plugins would you like to see? Uh, one of the things I always like to talk about, there, there's the obvious sort of thing here, which is you know, embedding applications inside of Mattermost. That makes a lot of sense. Most people understand that right away. Or embedding you know, applications inside Slack. Makes a lot of sense to bring an application and embed it into your chat or, or collaboration system. One of the things that doesn't get discussed that often, though, is what about going the other way? What about embedding your collaboration app into other applications, right? Um, and we provide some framework and tooling for that as well. But it's an interesting problem because not a lot of people think about that reverse aspect of it. And we kind of try to think about both. Now, obviously, we love when people embed applications inside Mattermost, uh, but we would love to see people embed Mattermost into other applications as well. So how, what does that look like at Mattermost? So we'll kind of go through all these different layers. Uh, we'll start with the, kind of the two bottom, open source and open data. I know those are kind of obvious, but it's always good to just talk about them. And then we'll really kind of jump into what we call the developer toolkit. Um, so the developer cool toolkit has a whole bunch of layers that we've created that kind of start from easiest to hard. And we'll kind of go through each of those. And I'll show examples of what you can do with these things. Uh, you know, we're open source. So, you know, I write this like difficulty four out of four. Um, but it's, it bears repeating. You know, I, I know in this, at this conference with this audience, it's kind of like, well, of course it's open source. But, but it, you know, open source has all that typical open source good. We have all that typical open source goodness. You know, you can fork it. You can change whatever you want. Um, but I think most people realize after a while, that's actually really hard. <laughs> and it takes a lot of energy and effort to do that. Um, I always like to describe it as like, I'm opening up the hood of my car. I go out there. I open up the hood of my car. I'm not a mechanic. I'm like, yep, that's an engine. Beautiful engine. There's a hose. There's a battery. I'm not sure what all that other stuff does. Um, and, and that's where open source is amazing because you can do that and just dig in. But it's also very intimidating because it's such a large, a large thing to dig into. 100% um, of what you see our application do is actually uh, is done through 100% uh, through a RESTful JSON web service. It's fully documented, so anything you see our application do, you, in theory, could write your own application to go do that. And, and not even in theory, people have done that. So here's a great example um, of just sort of open source goodness. So Matterhorn is a community project. Um, it's a terminal client written for Mattermost in Haskell. Uh, so there's a, people out, there's, a, there's a team of people out there who maintain this project. It's really cool. If you, if you want a, a, you know, a terminal version of Mattermost, you can go install it, and you can just connect straight to Mattermost and start using it from the terminal. This is all community-led. It's all done through our RESTful JSON web service. Um, and it's pretty amazing sort of the power of open source or what you can do here. And this is a great example of that. Now, this is also a lot of work. <laughs> uh, they basically you know, fully rebuilt the UI in a, in a terminal. Uh, and it's really cool and amazing, um, but you can see it, it's a lot of work. But that's sort of the power of open source. Um, another thing is open data. So uh, I don't think enough people talk about this, but it's, it's, it, it bears talking about, right? Mattermost is open data. You know, you own 100% of your own data. Uh, and that's, that's a really important or powerful concept, right? So not only do you own 100% of your own data or can own 100% of your own data, we actually, you know, do it in, in a SQL database. You know, the database, the APIs, all that stuff is fully open. There's no magical mystery of how to manipulate that SQL data. It's pretty standard. Uh, it makes things like charting, reporting, analyzing data out of that SQL database extremely easy to do if you're so inclined to do it. Uh, you know, there's no proprietary data models. There's nothing hidden here. And I think, you know, in the open source world especially, we talk a lot about open source, uh, but I don't think we talk enough about open data. Um, and I think this is a very powerful concept in the sense that, you know, you control your own data. Uh, you get to do with it what you want. 
so Mattermost Developer Toolkit. So now we'll start getting into the, the, the more detailed stuff here. And we kind of start from the top layer, um, from the easiest to the hardest. Um, so we'll kind of go through each of these with examples. So there's incoming outgoing webhooks, there's slash commands, there's our new application framework or apps framework. Uh, we have bots, we have a RESTful API. Then we kind of get into some really powerful stuff with our client side plugins and our server side plugins. So I'll kind of go through each of these. Um, I won't go in detail, there's a lot more here, but just enough to scratch the surface to hopefully people get interested to show some examples of how, how we do these different things. And, uh, and then kind of get into the really, some of the really more powerful stuff. Um, so we first start with webhooks. And you know, the difficulty on this is you know, like a one out of four. Um, we, kinda, we support two different types of webhooks. We support incoming webhooks and we support outgoing webhooks. Uh, incoming webhooks, you can post a message to a channel um, via URL basically. So it's a simple HTTP post request uh, to a URL. It's designed to be very easy to get data into the channel. The really cool thing is they're Slack compatible. So if you have a Slack webhook that works, more than likely it's just gonna work in Mattermost. So it's a really powerful, easy way just to get data into Mattermost, into a channel. Um, and then you have outgoing web webhooks, which is kind of the reverse. So uh, you know, we automate a response to a post made by a user. We have trigger words. So if it sees a certain word, it can trigger an outgoing webhook. And once again, it's just a simple HTTP post request to your own web service. And once again, they're Slack compatible. So if you want to get information easily out of your system and you already have a, you know, a Slack or something like that running, you already have a webhook for it, you more than likely can just hook that up to Mattermost and it just works today. Uh, one of the nice things about it. So a really quick example. Here's a couple examples of how we use it internally. Um, well the first one is actually a, um, I think it's like an SNS alert from you know, one of our, our, our uh, corporate machines that's having a high CPU alarm. I think we're running like an LDAP test or something like this. And all this is doing is, is taking the alert and posting it into a Mattermost channel uh, via webhook. We also have a GitHub webhook here as well as posting into a channel. Um, and it's just basically pumping data into the system. It's a very quick, easy way to get data into the system. It doesn't really require any kind of programming, any kind of you know, hard knowledge. Uh, like I said, you know, the, the, the cool thing here is if it works in Slack, more than likely it just works in Mattermost. Then we get to slash commands. Slash commands is kind of that same difficulty level. It's kind of pretty easy to do. It doesn't require a whole lot of, of programming or knowledge. Um, you know, slash commands uh, is an easy way to integrate external applications. So it's similar to outgoing webhooks, but it can be used in a specific channel. It's basically a, a simple HTTP post request. You can process that post request. The data that comes back for that is structured data. That structured data can go back into the channel. Uh, which makes it really nice of being able to execute a certain command, do some either lambda expression or lambda function to do something, and then bring that information back into the channel. Um, we have both built-in and custom ones. So you, we, we have ones that are built into Mattermost that just work today. Uh, we have custom ones that you can actually add yourself, and there's a lot of different ways to add these. Once again, they're also Slack compatible. So if you have a slash command that works in Slack, uh, more than likely it'll work in Mattermost as well. Uh, here's a really simple example of how we use some slash commands. So we actually have uh, a tool called MatterBuild. Uh, it's just used for building Mattermost. Uh, we actually execute a lot of the build commands from within Mattermost itself. So here's an example of Carlos issuing a command, slash MatterBuild. He's cutting, you know, 5.5 release. Um, if you look right below it, um, that's MatterBuild itself echoing back in the channel, in the channel he's in, which may be his own private channel, who knows where that's at. But at the same time, MatterBuild is actually issuing another uh, message into a different channel, the releases channel, and saying like, hey, we're cutting 5.0 uh, as well. So a really simple example of how you could use a slash command to sort of automate some of your build process, whatever it is that you do within your company. Uh, next, we have the apps framework. Um, so this is new to us. You know, difficulty is a little bit harder, um, but it gives us a lot of power um, in between sort of those simple webhooks in between what we in between our webhooks and slash commands and our and our plugin framework, um, it's kind of fills that nice void right in there. And we'll kind of talk about what these different things are. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to build new integrations. Um, it's in beta right now. It's expected to be in GA and Q4. Um, they're great for integrating external services from Atomos. The really nice thing about apps is you can use any language that you're comfortable with. Uh, doesn't have doesn't require React and Go. So if you're writing a plugin. 
um, a Mattermost plugin, and it pretty much requires React and Go, or you have to be very savvy to not use React and Go. Uh, the really nice thing about apps is, is that requirement doesn't exist. You can sort of do it in whatever language you want. Uh, there's, there's security scopes um, that allows apps to be installed and only use certain APIs or endpoints. So this makes it really nice in being able to differentiate between what a user can do, what an admin can do. We're going to eventually tie this to auth scopes as well. Um, so it makes it a really powerful feature. Uh, the really cool thing is apps work across both mobile devices and desktop as well. Mobile device, desktop, and web. Um, it doesn't require any specific coding for mobile or desktop. An app can be hosted anywhere as long as it's accessible via HTTPS or HTTP, uh, including serverless functions. So if you have a Lambda function that does something or kicks off a build, uh, you should be able to easily integrate that into an app or connect that up to an application. Uh, so what is the app framework? The app framework gives you a couple different things. Um, and, and we'll kind of talk about these different things. You know, some of them make it really powerful uh, to interact with Mattermost. So the first one is just, it gives you an API to register interactive um, um, UI elements, basically. Mm -hmm. So this gives you things like modal windows with fields. It gives you slash commands. Uh, it allows you to show a button on a specific channel. It allows you forms or embedded forms. So all of those interactive dialogues in a declarative way without having to write code uh, allows you to surface those in Mattermost. Um, and one of the cool things it allows you to do is then connect it up to your, to your, your service or your serverless, your Lambda function, whatever you're using on the back end for that. Um, we also give you an API of events. So you can subscribe to different events like a new user, a user has joined a channel, so you can create different workflows based on those events. Uh, we also give you access to a very simple key value store. Uh, so you're, that way you don't have to worry about your Lambda function um, needing its own storage. You can just store it directly back into Mattermost. And last but not least, probably one of the really cool features is uh, you automatically get an OAuth token uh, that's registered um, to call back into the app. So you can call back into our REST API. So once again, anything you see our front end doing, uh, we're giving you an OAuth token to call back into our APIs to do anything from your Lambda function or from the framework uh, to do those types of functions. So it's a really powerful mechanism where it gives you a declarative UI coupled with your own ability to run functions anywhere. Uh, coupled with a session token that allows you to call back into the, uh, call back into the server. Um, so really powerful concept um, in, in terms of filling in a, a huge void. Um, as a developer, what can my apps do with the framework? Well, you can, automa you can create slash commands. You can post messages to channel. Uh, if you look to the right, you can add buttons to the header. So just like start a Zoom meeting or start a Jitsi meeting button. Uh, you can add buttons to some of the drop-down menus. So like here's an example of create Jira issue or attach to Jira issue on the right. You have those interactive dialogues that I talked about, which gives you dynamic fields, better error handling. It also gives you interactive messages. So it allows you to embed messages in a, uh, it about, it allows you to embed forms in a message. So it gives you interactive dialogues and it gives you a form and a message, which is a really powerful way to either run surveys or kind of do whatever you want collecting data from this system. And it uses the Mattermost um, REST API to do all this as well. So what is part of an app, or how does it work? Um, uh, an app is an HTTP endpoint that is registered and will respond to Mattermost server uh, when there is uh, a user interaction, installation, or installation. So it's basically a JSON manifest file that you upload. It describes sort of declaratively what are some of the UI elements you need. It describes. Um, you can actually have embedded images or statically uploaded images in there. Uh, and then it also links out to where any of those buttons have interaction to whatever serverless function you want to call to. Uh, so it makes it really handy and convenient and easy. Uh, it also makes it really nice from a security perspective, especially for things like our, our cloud environment where we can do these things in the cloud and we don't have to worry about um, security as much because it's basically calling out to some other service versus running within the Mattermost infrastructure. Uh, so Mattermost has bots. So sort of on to the next thing. Difficulty is a little bit harder here, um, but it, these give you a lot of power um, in, in, in the ability to sort of read messages and respond to messages. Um, so kind of bots overview. Um, there's kind of two things to do here, or two, two ways to use it. Uh, so we have our official um, and community-built drivers for our web service. So just that RESTful JSON web service I was talking about, we have an official JavaScript library. We have an official Go library that we support. We actually use both of those. Uh, the JavaScript library is obviously used from our client. The Go library is used from all of our testing uh, framework and our, all of our internal tooling uses the Go library. Uh, there's some community uh, built drivers like the PHP driver and the Python driver. Um, so it's really nice, like I said. 
I think the Matterhorn people probably have a Haskell driver as well. So there's a lot of great um, community built drivers out there, but there's also some official drivers out there. So once again, anything you see our front end doing, uh, you can do that um, through any of these drivers. Um, another thing we provide is a, is a, is a sa sample bot written in Go. Um, it uses the Go driver to interact with the Mattermost server. Um, it basically shows you how to log in, create a channel, modify a user. It goes through a whole bunch of samples of, of what a bot might, how a bot might respond. So this is what it looks, here's a very simple bot example. So uh, the first function is log in as a bot user. You can see on line 99, that's client, you know, calling the log in, um, pretty simple. And then basically, you know, starting at line 161, we're just gonna send a message to a, de to a debug channel. And it's really line 168 is as simple as it is. If you can see, it's just client.createPost. There's a post that's being created, um, um, or a message basically. Uh, a message basically has a channel ID and a message body, and that's it. And we post that message in the channel. So here's a great way. We create a lot of bots internally to respond to messages, um, to auto-respond to things um, in the UI. In, from different users and different perspectives. So we, we provide this sample out of the box. It's a great way to get started. Um, it's a great starting point. Uh, we have a Hubot example. So there's, there's already one already built out there. Uh, it's pretty great. It's actually integrated into our community server. Uh, that reminds me, we have our community server, community.mattermost.com. Feel free to go join it. It's very active, I think. I can't remember how many people sit there. More than 5,000 people sit there. Uh, a lot of these examples will work there. Um, uh, you know, Hubot's a really powerful sort of bot framework. Um, we have an integration with that. Um, so anything you can do in Hubot just kind of surfaces automatically in Mattermost. So here's an example of the Hubot ship it. So we say Hubot, let's ship it. And Hubot responds, yes, let's ship it. Um, client side plugins. So, you know, difficulty here is pretty hard, four out of four, but it gives you a lot of power. And we'll kind of go through that, that power. Uh, client side plugins, um, you can basically customize the user interface. So the entire user interface that you see in Mattermost, you can write a, a plugin and customize wherever you want it. Uh, you can do things like add to the channel header, add to the sidebar, you can create more menus, um, you can register your plugin to, you can register a plugin to, to register a different post type. So when it detects a different message, it can, it can do a special rendering for that type of message. So there's a lot of power and flexibility here. We try to highlight the areas in the UI that we think um, you'd want to integrate with, and we created a toolkit to make that really easy. Um, but at the end of the day, we give you a, a, global, um, a global handler as well. So you can just register your, your bit of JavaScript code and kind of do whatever you want. You can take over from there and, and go to town. And we've seen people do some pretty amazing, crazy stuff. But, the really common integration points, we give you really clear uh, APIs to integrate with, and it makes it really powerful. So uh, we can run through some of those examples really quick. So we have a, ch a channel header button example. So this adds a button to the top of the channel header. Um, if there's more than one button, then you know, a dropdown is created, and they kind of get grouped together. Uh, this is great for things like video conferencing integration. Um, our built-in Zoom integration is actually a plugin. So we have a built-in Zoom integration. We have built-in Jitsi, uh, BlueJeans. Actually, all of those are written as plugins. Um, and you know, whenever we have a vendor, someone comes to us and says, "Hey, we'd like you know Mattermost to integrate with Blah." We're like, "Great, here's a here's one. Let's just copy this one and, and convert it over to to some other um, some other system." So, you can see from the code is very simple. It's just you know, register channel hide, channel sidebar button. You give it an icon. You give it the callback, and you give it the tooltip, and that's it. And so that little bit of JavaScript, that JavaScript function will get called back. Uh, when somebody clicks on that button in the UI. And once again, here's an example of the Zoom integration. So this is the, just the standard Zoom integration we have in Mattermost. It's putting that button on the screen. It's actually doing it via a plugin. Uh, we sent some other cool features like overriding post rendering. So you can register a component to custom render the body of a message. Um, this is really great for rich integrations with custom applications. It's more than a simple text or screenshot. Um, the Zoom plugin does this, so we'll kind of walk through an example. We've seen a lot of people do this with really cool interactive data, um, whether that data is coming from some, some sort of charting tool or something like that. You can render a real chart that gives you some interaction right in line. Uh, so it's really cool. Once again, same thing. It's very simple. If you look at line 22, we're just rendering the post type. Whenever it sees a custom post type of custom Zoom, it's going to call that, that, that class with that, that has that custom rendering function on the right. And that rendering function is going to take over from there and render the post. So we pass you the data. Um, we invoke your, your custom rendering function. And what that ends up looking like, at least for the Zoom integration, is whenever you get um, someone has started a, a meeting, 
that's actually a custom Zoom rendering. So if you look at the, the Zoom bot posts a message, it's a, it's a message of custom Zoom. And right in there, we actually have the, in, you know, the inline Zoom meeting uh, personal ID. We have the join meeting button, so you can click that, go straight into Zoom. Uh, if you actually, and it's interactive in the sense that if somebody ends the Zoom call and the Zoom call is no longer active, it'll actually show up here as like Zoom ended at blah, blah, blah time and the button won't be activated anymore. Um, and so here's a really great simple way, but we've seen some people do really amazing stuff, especially with interactive charts um, or interactive data or tables within, within Mattermost directly. And so it gives you a lot of power to sort of custom render uh, whatever you want. Um, you can render components on the team sidebar. So we use this actually with a lot of our different integrations. Um, you can register a component to show, basically show a button up on the sidebar. And we'll kind of talk about some of these different ones. We do it through GitHub. GitLab is an example of this. Once again, if you look at line 22, it's very simple. It's just register bottom team sidebar component. Here's the team sidebar component. If you look, there's the class on the right. And when it goes, it reserves you a little bit of screen and it basically calls your custom render function to do whatever you want there. So the way that works in Mattermost is, once again, this is our GitHub integration. So our GitHub integration in Mattermost is actually written as a plugin. And if you notice in the red box on the lower left, it actually takes over a little bit of the, the team sidebar and it renders all those custom buttons there. And all those custom buttons have their own interaction, their own handlers, whatever it is. So you can float over it, you can see a tooltip, you can click on it and go to, you can go to uh, either to a specific channel where that, where that post is, or you can go out to GitHub, whatever it is. Uh, we have a GitHub integration that does this. I think uh, our GitLab integration does this as well. I think Jira does this as well. So it's really nice to be able to add all this sort of uh, custom integrations right into the UI. Uh, makes it really powerful. Uh, you can rewrite a message client side. Uh, so this, some of these you know, end up being really powerful. So you can register a hook um, that'll get called before a message is formatted into Markdown. Uh, we use this in our wall time plugin. Once again, it's very simple. You know, register, you know, uh, let's see, line 15, register message will format hook. We basically post, we give you the data. You can transform that data and give it back to us. And sort of how that manifests is we have this wall time plugin. Um, it's really cool. So, it, it, we, so let's walk through this example. Uh, we have someone who's in Toronto time zone. He posts a message. They post a message, let's meet today at 10 p.m. Um, a user who's logged into Mattermost in another time zone, let's say Berlin, will actually see the message below him. He'll see, let's meet today at 10, and the wall time plugin actually augments it with his local time zone. It knows where he sits, and it says, like, I'm pretty sure 10 uh, a.m. Um, Toronto zone, time zone is, you know, whatever it is, you know, 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. here. And what's really cool is this is individual for each user. So if there was someone else from a different time zone, Pacific, looking at this message, they would see it rendering in, in, their, in their time zone as well. So another example is let's meet today at noon. Um, that user looking at it from his time phone perspective would see the bottom message, which is let's meet today at noon, augmented with what wall time thinks noon is for you. Um, so it's a really great way to individually deliver messages or to slightly tweak messages going back to individuals. Uh, server side plugins. So this is kind of the other half of the coin here. Um, client side is anything to do with the front end, and there, there's a lot more than what I showed here. There's a lot of other integration points. That's just kind of a, a sample out there of what you can do. Uh, so that kind of involves anything on the front end, taking over the UI, modifying the UI, whatever you want. Uh, we also have a bunch of server side plugins, um, and these can be very powerful as well. And I'll kind of walk you through a few, exa a few examples of these. So server side cell plugins, um, you know, they're launched, they're tightly integrated services with Mattermost. Um, you can actually manage the plugin very similar to how you manage. You can, you can do things like extend the REST API. So you can register a handler. You can take over, you can add new uh, REST APIs into Mattermost server itself to do custom handling right in line. And then there's also a bunch of integration hooks. We, have, we give you the ability to intercept messages, to detect when someone has joined the channel or left the channel. Uh, so it allows you to create a whole bunch of really cool, um, a really cool uh, workflow style plugins. And we see people doing this all the time. The, the classic example is, is we have some really large customers who have a workflow that has to be approved before somebody can join a particular channel. So not only is the channel private, but there has to be a specific authorization of somebody saying, some higher up saying like, yes, this person can join this channel. And so in this example, you know, somebody would join the channel, it actually pauses the, the joining and uh, kicks off a workflow. Um, an automated workflow, that other person sees the message, approves, and then eventually the person gets into the channel. So you can kind of intercept or hook into all those different types of messages. And there's a lot of them on the server side as well. 
we'll kind of walk through uh, some, some simple examples. Uh, the first one uh, is the ability to rewrite a message server side. So there's lots of opportunities to hook messages. You can hook it before it enters the database. You can actually reject the message. So we'll talk about things like data loss prevention. Uh, you can also send back ephemeral messages in its place or you can uh, hook the message after it enters the system record, after it enters the database. Um, so a really simple example that we have is our Autolink plugin. Uh, if you notice in the top screenshot, it's you know, me typing in a, a link to, our, our, uh, to JIRA, and below it just rewrites the message into a URL, basically, or to a markdown link. Um, really powerful, really simple. We use this all over the place in Mattermost. We actually use it to link um, sort of all of our alphabet soup and acronyms and stuff like that out to our documentation. So if somebody comes into our server and you type in something like LHS for left-hand side, it automatically highlights it and links it to the documentation. That way you can click on it and you can just read right there, oh, I know what this person is talking about. So it has a lot of just practical team applications, um, but it also has a lot of applications in terms around things like data loss prevention. Um, so on our community server, you can type this into an example. You can go to our community server, you can type in something that looks like a social security number, and it'll actually rewrite, it'll actually rewrite that piece of data. So it'll, it'll basically detect that it thinks it's a social security number, and before it enters the system or record, before it enters the database, uh, it'll actually rewrite the message, remove the, the, the social security number before it gets put in the system. So you can see the value of this in terms of security keys, authentication keys, anything that's easily detectable, uh, we can sort of stop it from, from uh, getting into the system, basically. Uh, really powerful concept around that. Autolink plugins, a really cool plugin. It's actually a generic plugin. Anyone can download it and install it. And you can add in all of these. You can extend it yourself if you want to, but it's pretty flexible and you can just add in a whole bunch of, of these sort of redirects or rewrites really easy without even coding. Um, so it's, it's great, really cool to see that you can add in your own custom ones, but you can just pre-configure a whole bunch of built-in ones as well. Uh, you can also implement an HTTP handler. So this is kind of getting really powerful. So you can basically uh, add another path into the Mattermost server. Whenever something happens on the front end, you can direct it to call that path. Uh, we do this with an example, um, our welcome bot example. So our welcome bot example is pretty cool in the sense that when you join a channel, they'll say like, hey, I think you're new here. Here's some channels I think you should join. Uh, and you can tell it your interests, like, you know, I'm interested in support. I'm interested in developing Mattermost. And uh, when you click that, it actually calls that custom handler it goes out of the back end, looks it up, and it kind of adds you to those channels. Uh, so the welcome bot hasn't been extended, but we have another bot that's really cool. It'll actually kind of try to figure out your interests, and based on those interests, it'll make channel suggestions to you and add you to those channels as well. And it kind of does it through this mechanism as well. So it's a really powerful concept of being able to, to very easily add um, uh, more endpoints into the server um, directly. And that's it. Like I said, let me uh, recap real quick. Um, so it's extensible by design. Like I said, there, there's just a, a small sampling of, of the different uh, integrations we have. And these can be anything from webhooks to apps to sort of full custom plugins, very rich. Like our, our Jira and our GitHub plugin are extremely rich interactive. Uh, our Jira plugin is actually bidirectional. So uh, when data is updated in, in Jira, it actually gets updated in Mattermost. And you can update the Jira ticket in Mattermost and it actually get updated in Jira. Uh, so it's really cool. So we have some really powerful ones, and we have some ones that are just plain, simple webhooks as well. Um, a lot of our, our plugins are actually translated. So this is for all of Mattermost, but we have 1,400 people uh, translated 700,000 words in 16 different languages. So a lot of our plugins are actually internationalized, which is really nice. We're translating different various languages. Um, and we're open source, and we're a globally distributed team. So I always like to, to uh, invite people to join our community server. So it's community.mattermost.com. You can kind of see the latest and greatest. You can interact with the Mattermost staff there. You can interact with the Mattermost community there. Uh, you can ask questions, get help, get support, uh, whatever it is. Um, we're hiring, so obligatory we're hiring message. Um, I always like to kind of give an offer of Matter Mattermost mentorship program. Um, so it kind of takes two forms. One is shepherding. Um, so if you want to sort of get help in figuring out how to contribute to Mattermost, um, you know, we're more, always more than willing to spend time helping people do that. Uh, we also actually have a mentorship program where uh, it's a little bit more involved, and if you want to spend you know, a few months with us or whatever, not a huge time commitment, but some time commitment of getting involved in us shepherding people through uh, an actual mentorship program, we do that as well. So if you're interested, uh, don't be afraid to hit me up. Um, questions, and this is how to reach me. So the best way to reach me is just at Corey on our community server, uh, my Twitter or my email, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, 
That's the best way to reach me. I'll go back to questions. Any questions? No? So many? <laughs> That's our hope. So App Framework is pretty, yeah, exactly. Uh, they, they both have their uses, and that's why we ended up building it. So App Framework is very new. I think there's a ServiceNow plugin. I can't remember. There's two or three plugins for it. I think we're, or, or apps on it. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of people convert over to it, and that's our hope. And it, it's a great, what we really envision plugins as is a way for staff to augment the server. Um, and the App Framework is sort of how we view external integrations. Now. There is a lot of power in the plugin framework. There's a lot of cool things that you can do that you cannot do through the apps framework because it has a declarative UI and those kinds of things. So there's still a lot of really cool stuff that we see people doing with plugins, so we don't think it'll ever go away. But we view it more as uh, if you're a staff member or somebody working on core, it's a way to augment the engine um, than it is to do an outside integration. So our, our hopes is that the apps framework will take over from there. So. Any other questions? No? Nope. All right, well, you can feel free to come up and ask me questions or anything you want to know about Metamos. I'm more than helpful to, more than happy to help. So, thank you.